Hello, everyone, and welcome to All of Us. My name is Rachel Wade. I'm the Chief Encourager and Founder here at All of Us, and I want to welcome you to Episode 51. I've titled this episode, Changing with the Seasons, and I'm very excited to formally introduce you to one of my dear friends who I get to do life with on a daily basis and that I have known for like a decade, my friend, Betsy Wright. Betsy, welcome to All of Us. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I have to tell everybody, I mean, you've been my friend for a really long time. You've heard you, from the beginning. I mean, from the beginning of all of us, Betsy has been um, a dear friend, a champion. We go to the same local church here in San Francisco. And um, I want y'all, I need you to know how important she is in my life. And um, I'm just so grateful for how you have um, encouraged me personally, how you have supported this ministry. And uh, yeah, just wanted to say thank you. So oh, thank you. <laughs> so with that, uh, Betsy, just let everybody know kind of who you are. I always call it like baseball card stats, like who you are, where you're from, all the things that you want them to know. Yeah, um, I am from Washington State originally, um, but we've been in San Francisco for about 13 years, I think. Um, and I've been married to my husband, Dan, for 17 years. And we have three children, 10-year-old um, twins, Jay and Lila, and a seven-year-old, Mason. Um, yeah, we're, we go to Epic Church. And that's yeah, me. for a season, Betsy and I, we uh, led mom's group, uh, well, I'd say more than a season, for years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, yes. led the, we led the mom's group at our church and then Betsy took over and led it some more years. And yeah, I would say, and you, maybe Betsy, this is different for you, but I would say that our relationship strengthened uh, through mothering in those younger years and leading alongside and serving, serving our community together and all the things. Yes. Say, definitely. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Well, let's get into it. But before we do, uh, Tell everybody how, what's your Jesus journey, Betsy? Like, how did you come to know Jesus? Yeah, I grew up going to church very regularly, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every, yeah. um, my mom for a long time was the children's minister at our church. Um, and uh, I was baptized after going to a summer camp in middle school. Mm. Um, I think my faith really became my own when I went to college and it was, it was up to me whether or not I was going to go every Sunday, whether or not I was going to continue doing that. And so um, that's when I really like claimed my faith and started like having a more personal relationship with Jesus, mm. I would say. Yeah. I love this question so much, uh, but I would say that like the majority of the time, even if for those of us that grew up in the church and I did too, though, it's when we get out of our parents' house and we are left to our own devices, it's like, well, what does this look like? Um, and it can go one of two ways. And some of us go wandering for a little bit longer and then you know, come back to Jesus. But I just want to encourage the parents that are out there, like the foundation, the deposits that you make, um, even if we stray, and I'm one of those strayers that, um, you know, those that never left me, like um, the rhythm, God, who God was, that foundation never left uh, me. So be encouraged that um, taking your kids to church, taking them to church camp, building those relationships with other people that are developing their faith, uh, they matter. So just wanted to say that. Well, I've titled this episode uh, Changing with the Seasons because Betsy has changed with the seasons and her, her life has looked a little bit different than it did for a while. And as her friend, I got a front row seat to kind of look at what those seasons look like. And so that's why I, what's what I wanted to talk about today. And so for most of us, you know, changing and shifting of seasons, um, it can be hard. You know, I, I don't think any of us love change, um, <laughs> but it's coming for us. And, you know, your youngest went to kindergarten. Your youngest is the same age as, as my Caleb. And your primary role was to be at home with them, to raise the family, to get them from point A to point B and all the things. But the twins were older and were already in school. And then here comes Mason and he's going to kindergarten. And all of a sudden it was like, all right. Um, so everyone's in full-time school now. <laughs> uh, what emotions, what feelings, like take us back to that time, Betsy, on kind of what was coming up for you as you saw, you know, pending the last kid going into elementary school full-time. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, well, first of all, my biggest dream was always to be a mom. And yeah. so I, you know, I, I worked before I was a mom and, but I didn't really have these like big career aspirations. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, and I kind of always assumed maybe I'd go back to work after the kids got in school full time, but it wasn't like I had this career. I was like waiting, you sure. know, to go. Um, and so I hadn't really thought much past like, oh, when the kids are all in school, what will I do now? And, um, but a, a couple years or like about a year before Mason started, uh, kindergarten, I started having this feeling of like, mm. oh, I feel like I should be doing more, like some, something more in addition. Right. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't, there wasn't really anything that I was like, oh, I should be doing this specific thing. Um, so yeah, I guess I was just kind of questioning like what what will my role be after they all are in school and if I'm not, you know, at home all day with kids, what what am I meant to be doing? Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think that uh that resonates with so many women. We have so many moms in our community, those that those of us who choose to and have the privilege to be able to stay at home full time with our kids. But there's just this worldly pressure that I, I just honestly can't stand <laughs> that um, it's coming for us or not. Like we don't have to even, I don't know. I, it's just out there where it's like, if you feel like if you're not, especially here in San Francisco for the rest of wherever you all are, it could be different. But from our context, everyone has like three and four things that they're doing all the time. Like yep. this is the land of startups and entrepreneurships and like it or not, we're in this atmosphere, moms, dads, like everyone included. And I do believe that we feel that pressure. Um, and so you're not the only one. I, and I think that that can be hard when it's like, well, what else do I need to be doing something else? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's a feeling of like, what am I, this, this is shifting, what's happening here, what's going on. Um, so we can, can't, we can kind of come into an identity crisis. You know, I remember when I decided to stay at home with Maya, um, it really took me a minute to recognize that I had worth and value as a mom mm -hmm. <laughs> and that me doing that full time, like it, it, it took, I wasn't bringing home any money. Like there was all these challenges that I had to personally work through. And I feel like almost died to like, especially people would ask me, you know, like, well, what do you do? Um, <laughs> have you been faced with that, Betsy? I mean, I think I know the answer, but you know, was that ever a wrestle for you? Like it was for me, just even being compared to Dan or titles or any of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the point that you made about it being like, it is like an outside pressure of like where you live or who you're surrounded with, but it wasn't, no one was saying anything to me. I don't even think other people thought, thought anything about it. Right. It was just this like internal, like, ah, I, I feel like, I feel like I'm missing something almost like, mm -hmm. like, you know, there might be something that God has for me to do and I'm missing it. Yeah. Uh, and that was like my, that was like my biggest fear, right? Is that I'm, I'm like not doing something I should, I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I lost the question. What was the No, question? no, no. Yeah. You answered it. You answered it. <laughs> so, you know, identity wise, you know, oh, yeah. actually we're kind of wrestling through um, that transition. And like, you know, you said this it was almost like an internal pressure that you were putting on yourself. Uh, is there anything that you learned about yourself in that time that, uh, you learned about your relationship with the Lord. Like, I'm just wondering identity wise, if God brought anything to the surface for you as you were thinking about that insecurity of like, well, what am I supposed to, am I supposed to be doing more? Yeah. Yeah. I did. I like came to a point where I really felt God saying to me, like, you just need to, to own this role right now. Like this yeah. is, yeah. this is what I have for you right now. This is enough. This is you know, you're not, and I felt also a sense of peace that like, if God had something else for me and I was in a position where I was seeking his word and his wisdom and guidance that he wouldn't let me miss it. If there was something else I was supposed to be doing that, that if I was looking for these opportunities, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it go by. Mm. That sounds similar to when we're like wanting to be married. <laughs> like, you know, like I think that often um, I hear stories and this has been my story too of like, 
when I go looking for like the relationship for the guy, you know, yeah, I always seem to find myself in with guys that I probably shouldn't be with or in situations, but it's like when I'm seeking the Lord and I'm mm -hmm. so in him, you know, that to me is when the Lord is like, okay, and now you have this opportunity or it, it's, it's crazy how that happens. But I just made me think about that with like a spouse and dating is, it's kind of similar with, with yeah. that career. Yeah. You don't have to force anything like, yes. If you're, yes. In tune with what God is telling you. Yeah. going to let you know. <laughs> right. And so as you began to seek the Lord and really just, you know, almost like become resolute and this is, this is my role and this is what it looks like for now. And if, He's got something for me, you know, it's not going to pass me by. Um, a year or so ago ish, uh, mm -hmm. you ended up <laughs> having two new opportunities uh, that came to you one called Bring the Coffee, one called Elevate Properties. Can you tell us about that shift? Because here you are, you're now, you're like, okay, God, I'm confident in where I'm at. Then how, how, how do you make that shift? How did that come about? Walk us through that. Yeah. Yeah. They were both, um, opportunities that came from friends approaching me and being like, Hey, do you want to do this thing with me or talking about it? And I was like, Hey, I can't stop thinking about that coffee nonprofit you just told me about. And yeah, um, huh. yeah so they just came about through friends and, um, the Elevate Properties one is a house flipping business that I have with a friend. And he first approached me about it about, about a year after um, I had really like felt this like own mm -hmm. this role as a, as a stay at home mom. Um, and the timing wasn't, wasn't quite right, but I could see ahead enough to see that the timing would be right. Once Mason was in school full time, my yeah. parents are moving here from out of state. They live like four blocks from us now. And so it was just like, I, I knew I was going to have this time and this space um, to transition into this, into these roles. And so, um, yeah, that's, we waited for the right time and got it going. And mm. yeah. yeah, I think there's something to there, Betsy, with community and re the relationships that you already had. Like, um, and I, as much as I know about how these two organizations came to be, what I learned um, from reading your blog post was that uh, these these opportunities, people approached you. And yeah. I think that there's something in that about, you know, being in relationship to know what people's giftings are, to know how they're wired, to know, you know, for them to even approach you, it took a relationship with you. And yeah. it, it took like some shared interest and mm -hmm. seeing some giftings within you. And mm -hmm. I think that that's so God that weaves our stories together in that way, um, because right timing is everything, but then also knowing your people and knowing who would be better suited uh, to start things or even join your team or whatever is so, is so critical because both those things are up your alley. I mean, you wouldn't have said yes, right? If you weren't, if you yeah. weren't interested. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it's also like, neither one of them are things that, you know, five years ago, I would be like, oh, that for sure mm -hmm. sounds to make sense for me. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. what you're saying also is like, people that you're in community with can sometimes see your abilities. Yeah a little bit clearer than you can and be like, yeah, no, I think you can do this thing. I think we can do this thing together and it, you know, it will be good. So. Yeah. And I, and I remember even, you know, not being a part of those two things, but hearing you share like, Hey, I think that like, this is what, this is what I'm, you know, working on with Jason. This is what I'm working on, you know, and you know, for me and others to be like, Oh yeah, like that makes <laughs> sense, you know, because I see, you know, how, you love um, interior decorating and how you can set a scene so well, how you're hospitable, how you can bring all these things together that just blow my mind because it's not my gifting. <laughs> um, but I see that in you. So when you brought it to me, I do also feel the responsibility. There goes that thing again. I never can <laughs> use emojis if you're watching. Um, there's no rhyme or reason on Zoom now. <laughs> emojis that pop up if you're watching. But, you know, I remember thinking to myself like, this makes sense. Like this is in line with what I see in you. So the responsibility, I believe for me as your friend too, is to be like, yeah, you know, like let me co-sign on that because that actually is, it seems like the assignment and the timing is right. 
Now, I do believe also on the other end that if it wasn't right timing or if I felt like it's like, yeah, Betsy, you can do that. But like, should you be doing that? Mm -hmm. I also think that this is there's a responsibility for us as friends um, and close friends. I mean, everyone, it depends on where you are. But if I would I think, too, that if it wasn't right timing, I'd be like, oh, man, Betsy, like that sounds like an amazing idea. Do you think with blah, blah, blah that you have going on that this is the right timing? You know, like, so I think on both ends, right? Like to encourage our friends to step into their giftings and new projects, but then at the same time to have a hard conversation sometime to be like, hey, like you just talked to me about how much anxiety you have this week. You know, like, is it time for that new thing? Right. I think there's a responsibility on both ends. Yeah. Um, encouragement and accountability. Agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Betsy, did you ever, cause these are two projects that, I mean, you're an entrepreneur. So like, did you ever picture yourself as an entrepreneur, you know, a number one, and then like, where do you, you know, gain your encouragement and your inspiration to kind of get those creative juices flowing? Because, you know, you have, you're, you're no one's telling you and giving you the blueprint on how to do this. So two part question. Yeah, no, I never never pictured myself being an entrepreneur and it was kind of one of those things where it's like I feel like sometimes when you're shifting assignments it's something you like you go to school and you prepare and you you know you you work your way up to it and these it, this wasn't like that it was like okay, we're gonna start this thing and it's like well I don't have any schooling or you know mm -hmm. uh, any experience in starting a business or a nonprofit or um, and so it was kind of like, should I be doing that if I don't, yeah. you know, but I think in both cases, like God just kept opening doors and it made yeah. sense to just keep going and to keep walking through them. And, you know, it's, uh, it's worked out, it's worked out so far. So far yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. remember the 501c3 thing was like a thing for you, like as you were establishing the nonprofit, yep. um, one of those things where it can kind of seem like, oh, this is scary because I literally have not done this before. And you want to get that. That's one of the things like you want to get right, right? Like there's yeah. paperwork and all kinds of legal stuff yeah. in, involved. Yeah. And even with that, like the lawyer we were working with said, you know, it usually gets bounced back a couple of times. So it can be a long process and it was just accepted the first time. So yeah. Just yeah. like that along the way where you're like, okay, I think, I think we're going in the right direction. So. Yeah. And I think we need those little, like those little wins to be like, yeah. okay, like, okay, God, like, I don't know how to do this. Here I am. Let me, so who's in my, sometimes it's asking yourself the question of, is there someone in my sphere that I can ask, you know, for help from, is there <laughs> someone that I can hire? I mean, like all these different answers like being a good problem solver is you know like what I say to my kids like well how how can we be good problem solvers here like how do we go about finding the answer to this you know yeah. um it's key I think when you are walking into something new not knowing that you're not going to always have all the answers and I, I think I would like to encourage the all of us family with that too is sometimes God called often God will call us to assignments where we don't have the full mm -hmm. the full blueprint on how to do it. We will have pieces of it, giftings within us that allow us to be able to do it. But I always say if it's a God dreamer, if it's something that God's assigned us to in the right season, that it will take um, our community to help us to make that come to light. And also it will take him. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, you know, if you find yourself in something, starting something where you don't need anybody else, uh, and you've got all the answers, then I, I would say, uh, man, that might be a good time to get curious about, is it a God thing um, or yeah. is it just a thing? You know, yeah. and I think it's possible to get into to, to either one of those things. So no, thanks yeah. for sharing. That's good. Um, so Betsy, I, you know, again, huge mom community here at all of us. Uh, I can hear, or maybe someone's thinking, you know, well, I'm just a mom, you know, I'm just a mom. And they are saying like, I, I'm not an entrepreneur. Like here I am, I'm in the thick of it right now with like two, three kids. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you say to that? I'm just a mom, because you and I heard that a lot um, when mm -hmm. we were in a season with, you know, moms mothering with younger kids. What do you say? And how do you encourage the mom that says that they're just a mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the phrase just a mom is kind of laughable, right? Because you're Man. Man. A billion things throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, it's such an important 
role and assignment. And it is not, it's not less than any other assignment. It, and I think when you're spending that time at home with your kids, especially, you know, young before school age, yeah. you have an influence over them that no other assignment is going to give you that much influence with another person. Yes. You're, you know, you're, you're with them during those pivotal developmental years and you, you're, you're establishing their morals and values and introducing them to Jesus. And that's, yes. I mean, there's nothing more important than that. Um, we, we have a quote on our wall from C.S. Lewis and it is, uh, let me try to get it right. Uh, <laughs> Children are not a distraction from more important work. Children are the most important work. Amen. Uh, and I love that. And I think that that's so in line, you know, with being yeah. a mom. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we may, we say, you know, we wear many hats. And, you know, one of the things that we say at our local church actually is that no vocation is insignificant. And being a mom, it's a call, an assignment, and a vocation, <laughs> you know, um, and even it is so hard sometimes with the messaging that the world, you know, says about value and worth and assignments. And we, we want to pit certain careers and vocations and assignments over others. But in the kingdom of God, we know that every assignment is significant, especially those, you know, we, with who we have the most influence and that mm -hmm. is our children. Um, and you've done such a great job with that, Betsy. Um, and I've gotten to, to see that and witness that, um, we did it together, but also, you know, just seeing your kids flourishing and, and being loved and, and pointed to Jesus. And, you know, I always say at the end of it all, <laughs> you know, it's like, what's really going to matter. It's like th that them going on and hopefully accepting Jesus and living a life that's glorifying him. That's like what, what that matters more than anything, you know, um, I believe. So yes, yeah. I agree. That's, that's an yeah. encouragement for the mom. Um, oh, yeah. Awesome. I just, um, I think it's such a good opportunity to connect with other women too. Yeah. Like being a mom and being around other moms, you have this like oh. shared experience, right? That it can be awkward to make friends when, you, when you're an adult. And yeah. it's just this automatic connection that you can really lean into and make new friends through like easily. Yes. Um, and I think that I, it gave me the opportunity to really deepen friendships and make new friendships that now, as we were talking about community going into other seasons, like you and the other women from our mom's group are like some of my biggest encouragement and support and, you know, my best friends. And I think that that's important. And it's, it's, it can feel overwhelming to try to establish those while you have these little kids at home, but it is such a great opportunity to connect with women who are in the same stage as you. Absolutely. I 100% I agree with that. And even for those that like, and, and maybe you find yourself doing this as well, Betsy, but I think very fondly of like the memories that, you know, in those younger years with the moms that, that we built relationships with. And some of them in this season, I wouldn't say that I'm friends with, but you know, I look back at those years fondly and I'm just so grateful. And I even feel like if I see them in passing or if I see them online or in social media, like there's just this like special place, you know, like yeah. my heart for what we shared, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so uh, I want to remind us of that too, that, that seasons change and with the seasons changing and kids growing older and, you know, we're in different directions and different schools and different activities, right? Some of us move away, especially here in San Francisco, we're more of a transient city. Um, we can still look back and thank God for that time that he surrounded us with other moms that we were, you know, sometimes, some days barely hanging on and, but at the same time, you know, like deepening our, our, our friendships and, and deepening our relationship with God, it can be just a really sweet and tender and vulnerable, you know, time <laughs> that I look yeah. back. On yes. yes. You can encourage and commiserate. Together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and both of those are important. <laughs> yes, they are. Because nobody gets they it, are. you know, like nobody gets it like a mom. Yeah. Yeah, especially a mom in the thick of it. I will even yeah. say that when you when you kind of move out of the season, how quickly do you yeah. have to forget what it's like? Yes. And, um, yeah. And so that, like you said, I think it was important that you said, you know, find moms too that are in the same season as you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because when you're removed, you do, God gives you amnesia for a reason. <laughs> It's true. It's true. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh man. So Betsy, for the one that, and you talked about pausing your career mm -hmm. um, to full-time mother, mm -hmm. encourage the mom that as a full-time, because we have a lot of, of women in our lives and here in all of us that have chosen to, you know, be a full-time mom and work outside the home full-time. And there's this guilt and shame thing there. Um, of working and mothering at the same time. We have friends that do both. Um, now you're doing both. I'm doing both. Anything come to mind on how you can encourage them just in their mothering and in their career? Oh, I mean, I feel like this is where the the in process is for me. Um, it's, so you know, I'm used to having things like very under control at home, like all the laundry is, you know, whatever. And and it is, I feel like I'm really in a time of kind of rebalancing everything. It's like I'm, it's like I'm barely getting everything done instead of like having a handle on like my daily tasks. Um, and I think it's also been a shift for, for the kids and for my husband, you know, they're used to me being yes. accessible and have time to do all these things. And sometimes now I have to remind them like, Hey, sorry, I didn't get to that. Or, you know, um, so I don't know that I have encouragement other than I feel that. And yeah. I, yes. you know, it's something that is, is a new experience for me and yeah, I'm working yeah. through it. So. Working through it. And I think it yeah. is very much like you said, in process, I don't think we ever, as far as I've heard, ever arrive at a point to where, well, period, but ever arrive specifically in this area where we don't at some point feel guilt, shame mm -hmm. on not getting all the things done perfectly all the yeah. time and recognizing, giving ourselves grace. It's not, that's that I'll say that I've had to give myself much more grace in mm -hmm. that I can't do all the things that I used to do when I was a full-time mom or in the timing. What I've learned though, is this is a beautiful opportunity for my husband and for the kids to step up, um, <laughs> to, to, to gain more responsibility, you know, yeah. know that I am not just a mom that I have other assignments and giftings and God had put me in this world more than just being a mom and uh, a wife. Although those are significant and, and important in my life yeah. and top. I got other things going on. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think that we as moms have the opportunity to also train up our families and encourage them to take on more responsibility. Yes. Yes. I feel like I've said many times recently, like you, you guys don't do this to daddy when he's yes. working. <laughs> That's me all the time. I'm a broken yeah. record. Like, do you ask but your dad that? <laughs> But it is, it's like, you know, that's how they've been trained, right? Dad yeah. is working. Yes. He can't do this for me right now. Yeah. Mom is usually available. And, yes. you know. So it's yeah. It just takes a little bit of retraining. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or a yes. lot of retraining. Yes. <laughs> yes. And two, you know, like I want to share, I mean, I just came off of a very busy weekend um, with an event and I'm in full, I'm in school and seminary and I've, I've got quite a lot of assignments and yesterday and you know, y'all, this taping is going to air much later than than what you are. I'm about to say, but the sentiment is the same. That on a day where the kids had a holiday and and my husband had a holiday, I had to work. Mm -hmm. um, so what that looked like was me having to communicate what my need was. But I did have a moment yesterday where I was tired, where I was feeling guilty because I could not take the whole day off with the rest of them. Three, mad that I like am put into this position. Four, like also feel like shed some tears because I want to be all the places and I want to spend the whole day with them. And I also want to rest, but I also want to be alone, but I also have work to do. <laughs> yeah. um, and so sometimes it can, if you feel the rush of all those emotions um, at one time, I want to say that I see you and I hear you and that it's normal. Um, it's normal. And so how, how do we sit with those emotions, welcome them and kind of get along? I don't have the answer. I'm just saying that this is, this is me. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's a work in progress for everyone. I think. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, Betsy, um, we're going to end our time today. And I'm just so grateful um, that you actually said yes to all of us. <laughs> like, yes. You know, y'all, I, I asked her and I said, cause I know my friend, 
Um, I text her. I was like, Hey, I really would love for you to be on all of us. But don't hate me though on this request. Uh, <laughs> and so this is Betsy once again, stepping out of her comfort zone. Um, but I just, again, appreciate you sharing your in-process story. And it is, it is one of like, you know, welcoming the new seasons, you saying goodbye to some old ones, but at the same time, figuring out like, God, how do you meet me and all of this? Any last words of encouragement to moms out there, to people wanting that are uncertain of like a changing shift in season, anything you want to leave before we do that fire today? Oh, um, yeah, I just, I think it can be, uh, you know, I, I was saying before it, it can be uncertain and there can be some fear there and nervousness, um, but starting something new is also really fun. It yes. Can be fun. And also you, like, I'm super proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's like, I did this thing that I wasn't sure I could do. And that there's a lot of, yeah, there's growth and yes. yeah. There's so. fruit there. There's fruit there. And on the other side, as we encourage, you know, our friends to step into new assignments and new seasons, um, man, you feel as you're praying for them and cheering them on, it's like our win, you know, like it's our shared win when we invite our friends into our dreams, into the new assignments, into the wrestlings, like all of it. Like it just, it's so much sweeter um, when we're not going at, you know, all this alone for all the reasons. And yeah. so uh, I'm happy to hear as your friend that you are proud of yourself because you should be. It's a good <laughs> and you're doing good things in this world. And it's super, super encouraging to my heart. And I know to so many people that are listening and watching. So thanks for showing up. Just you as you. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. <laughs> All right. Well, rapid fire to end our time together, Betsy. Are you ready? I'm ready. All righty. Okay. God is faithful. Amen. When seasons change, expect um a period of rebalancing oh, yes yes so true and all of us are better when we're in community all right amen well betsy thanks for being with us if people want to connect with you or what if they want to learn more about you know all the things that you've got going on whether that's bring the coffee or want to stay connected to you how can they do that yeah um bring the coffee we have a website which is um well it's kind of annoying because it has the that's dash okay. We'll put, it in, we'll put it all in the show notes. Okay. Yeah. We have a website and we're also on Instagram. Um, and then, yeah, I have a personal Instagram and email. But. Awesome. Well, we'll put everything in the show notes. If you want to follow along, Betsy, all the things that she's doing. Uh, yeah. We're so excited that you're part of all of us officially, officially. Uh, Betsy's also been a part of recount to remember and, uh, there is a beautiful story. We didn't get into it too much today um, about infertility. And so this is an area I know that Betsy loves to encourage and uh, come alongside people that are uh, have experienced infertility and have questions concerning that. So if that's you, um, feel free to just drop into her DMs and I'm sure she would be willing to walk alongside you. So that's all, all right. for now, all of us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.